Hi, in today's video we're going to talk about the proper way to terminate intercom wires on Newtone intercom systems that have loop wired speakers. Loop wiring means that you'll have a cable of Newtone intercom wire. This is Newtone IW6, which is six conductor wire, and you'll have one set of wires or one cable that comes into the station and is terminated onto the screws of the station itself and then you'll have another wire loop out of the station and continue on to the next room and it was brought to my attention this morning that this is not something that everyone knows how to do and how to do properly so that's what I'm going to show you so what we have here is a Newtone IS515 indoor remote selective call station these are used with Newtone intercom systems IM5006 and the later IM5000. Those two systems were designed. The speakers could be loop wired. So let me show you how to do that. So I'm going to turn this over. And on the back of the station, you have a speaker cone. You have a circuit board. And on the circuit board are the standoffs with the screw terminals where the wires will be terminated. And I'm going to show you how to do this properly so it can eliminate problems that could happen with your system. So here you can see on the plastic cover sheet that protects the circuit board, labeled next to each screw terminal is the color of wire that attaches to that particular screw. You have black and black with a white stripe, orange, orange with a white stripe, red, and finally red with a white stripe. And that corresponds with the color coding on the Newtone IW6 wire. You have red and red with a white stripe and orange and orange with a white stripe and black and black with a white stripe. So if you have a station that's only going to have one wire underneath each screw, let's say it's the last speaker on a loop, and since the loop is not continuing on to another room, you would just have one set of cable, one cable with one set of wires coming into that room. All you do is choose the appropriate wire, put it underneath the head of the screw and above the washer that's also on the screw, and bend the wire around the screw clockwise. Since screws tighten in a clockwise fashion, you always want to wrap the screw in a clockwise fashion so that when you tighten the screw, it pulls the wire underneath the head of the screw and the washer and you get a nice tight connection. So we'll go through and hook all of these up. Making sure that we get the right color wires underneath the appropriate screws. And there you have it. It's an appropriately terminated cable on the back of an IS515 speaker. The screws are moderately tight. You don't have to wrench on them. Uh, sometimes if the screws are stripped out, you'll have to replace it with another screw because they do need to be tight. If the wires are loose under the screws, you can have erratic operation on the station or in the long term it could damage the station. So that's the proper way to do it. So how do you do this when you're looping? Looping would be that, so you have your incoming cable, but you're also going to have a second cable here. This is your outgoing cable that's going to continue on to another room down the hallway. So you have two sets of wires under each screw, so how do we do this? Well, let me show you. So first what I'm going to show you is how not to do it. So let's take, we're going to take the red and red-white pair as our example, but this will hold true for all of the wires on the station. So here we have our red and red-white wire that's going to travel out to the next room down the hallway, and we need to connect these wires on the standoffs with the two existing wires. So we'll go ahead and loosen the screw for the red wire, and we'll take the, red, the second red wire, we'll wrap it underneath the screw and above the washer, and tighten it down. And then we'll do the same thing with the red-white wire. All right. 
So now we have two red wires and two red white wires both wrapped under the head of the screw in a clockwise position and the screws are tightened down. This is exactly the wrong way to do it. This will cause problems. It's very difficult to get both wires under the screw and have them both be tight under the screws. And let me zoom in and show you potentially what happens to this. So here we are zoomed in on the standoffs that contain two red and two red white wires. And if you look carefully, you can see here on the terminal for the red wires that at the top of the screw right here, the wire has pushed out from underneath the head of the screw. And here, the end of the wire isn't really folded back under the screw as well as it should be. This is what causes a problem. This type of termination, this was done in what I would call a casual manner, which is the way a lot of terminations are made in the field by installers. They simply aren't really focused in on the details of what they're doing, and you end up with terminations like this, which are less than ideal. So now I'm going to show you the proper way to do this. Here we have our original IW6 cable and I've disconnected it from the back of the IS515 speaker. And what you can see here is that the insulation on each wire has been stripped back a little more than a half an inch, which is plenty when you're wrapping a single wire under a single screw and tightening it down. But when you're have multiple wires underneath a screw and if you're going to terminate the wires correctly where we'll have two of each color first thing you need to do is you need to strip back the insulation about double what it is now if a half an inch is good for one screw then you need about an inch if you have two wires so I'm going to go ahead and restrip these to about an inch it's not critical and I'll show you why once we get things further along. All right, so now we have our six wires and they've been, the insulation has been stripped back about an inch or so, maybe a little more on some, that's fine. And then we'll take our second IW6 and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna strip back the insulation to about an inch or so And the reason we're doing this is it gives us a greater amount of bare copper wire to work with, which is what we really want. So again, we're going to start with the red and red white pair. So here we have one red and red white pair and here we have the second and we're going to match up the colors. So we're going to take the two red wires first and we're going to put them together. So, the beginning of the insulation matches. So they're at the same level right here. And then you're gonna take the wire and we're gonna wrap one over the other and we're gonna twist it together with our fingers into a nice, tight bundle. Just like that. This is a properly twisted together pair of wires. There, it's a tight twist, there's not a lot of gaps, it's not going to wiggle or come loose on its own. This is going to stay together. So we did the red wire. Now we'll do the red white wire. Again, matching up the end of the insulation on each individual wire. And then again, twisting the wires together. I always twist the wires clockwise. That's just the way I do it. And so here's a close up shot. These are the orange wires. And you can see here how I have the point where the insulation begins, where it's been, it's been stripped off at the end, so we have bare ends, and so I've matched up the ends of the insulation, and then take the wires, cross one over the other, and simply twist them together. And that's a nicely bundled up pair of wires. And now I'm gonna go ahead and twist together the remaining five wires, or four wires. So here we have our 12 individual wires, two of each color, and they've been twisted together into pairs. 
So we have six pairs of wires all neatly twisted together. And the last thing we're going to do before we go to terminate them on the back of our IS-515 IS speaker is we're going to clip off the ends. When you twist wires like this, you end up with these kind of open raggedy ends on the wire and we don't really want those or need those. So we're going to take our wire cutters and we're simply going to snip off the raggedy end. And while it probably doesn't really make any difference, it sort of falls under the category of good workmanship or pride in workmanship. If you're going to stand there and twist the wires together, let's go ahead and do a proper job on it. So now we're going to go ahead and attach them to the back of our speaker. So again, we have the back of our IS-515 speaker. We have our six nicely paired up sets of wires and we're going to go ahead and terminate them under the screws just like we did before. We'll have to back off the screws a little more than when we were attaching a single wire, but you take your nicely twisted pair, wrap them clockwise under the screw, and tighten it down. And when you do it this way, since the wires are twisted together, there won't be a chance for the wires to be pushed out from under the screws and you won't have partially connected or loose wires where one is held tight and the other one's kind of loose under the screw. There'll be nice solid connections and this will eliminate a lot of potential problems with how the system may operate. And there you have it. Six nicely terminated twisted pairs of wires under each screw. There's no pieces of wire coming out from underneath the head of the screw in any place. It's all held in very securely. And these are good, strong, tight connections. So that's a very fundamental thing to know how to do on Newtone loop wired systems. And I hope this helps you with troubleshooting on your systems. If it does, please like it on YouTube. If you find our videos to be helpful, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, if you have questions or comments, please leave it in the comments down below. That's all for today. See you on the next video.